there. This is a Tito Aqua and Stanley Aqua. Uh, from the great couch, great right? Couch. A great couch conversation. So, not sure if you saw introductory video, but if you didn't, we hope you can join us on the couch where we'll be exploring concepts that foster emotionally healthy marriages for people like us, and we've defined who people like us are, right? <laughs> So uh, we're starting, we're going to be exploring the theme of communication because communication is like the foundational the base. Big, the big C. Yeah, the big C, you know, the, the base layer that informs all of the others. And this is where I get to begin to speak a little bit slower so that the closed captioning on YouTube can catch my words, right? So that's what we talk about cultural. <laughs> But um, for today, we're going to be talking about languages, right, as it relates to love and um, basically exploring the concept of love languages. What are they? So love languages, a uh, concept introduced, at least I think it's introduced, I first heard of it from Gary Chapman in his book, The Five Love Languages. I would have it here in my library, but I loaned it out. <laughs> Return my book. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but anyway, um, so he call, keeps, calls out five love languages mm -hmm. um, uh, that you may or may not speak. Uh, the one that comes to mind is giving gifts. People that enjoy giving gifts. Um, spending quality time. Touch. Words of affirmation. And I keep... keep the fifth one. What's the fifth one? I keep bringing for the fifth one. A physical touch. Did you talk about I did, touch? I did touch. So let's try this again. Uh, quality time, uh -huh. giving gifts, words of affirmation, uh -huh. acts of service, uh -huh. and touch. Yeah. That's it. Okay. I missed acts of service the first time. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. So those are primarily the five love languages. You should read this book if you haven't read it. Uh, if you um, if you have, then you know what I'm talking about. Specifically, if you speak the same language or speak the language that your spouse does, then all your uh, acts of uh, love will go into this great big bank and you have a good recompense for your for your efforts but um so i guess now i'm going to be the one to break this down because this is where we talk about culture right you can probably tell what are these people talking about because it kind of sounds like an american concept but the did i say speak slower but the idea is that um you know a love language is something that you do for a spouse or that you uh Tra transmit toward a spouse that makes them light up, right? So some people enjoy giving gifts and so in that sense they would probably be a person who is a gift giver to their spouse. But the problem then becomes if the spouse is not generally a person who is enamored by gifts. And the thing is, I mean, there's really nothing wrong with no one language is better than the other. The idea is understanding, understanding what makes the other person tick, right, in that sense. So that can be a little bit dangerous though, because mm -hmm. take for example, I'm giving you a gift mm -hmm. and that's not your love language mm -hmm. and it seems as though you do not appreciate the gift that mm -hmm. I'm giving. Mm -hmm. That could be a double whammy. I mean mm -hmm. in terms that you're not appreciative of you know, all my efforts giving it just speaks me. It's not the person's love language, you know. But then, um, I don't know. I'm just saying that could be a gray area. Yeah, yeah. But, but we're not going to go off on that tangent. <laughs> yeah, at least not today. No, but we, we wouldn't we? Because in that the whole purpose of what okay. we're saying mm -hmm. that even when you thought that the person's love language is one way, things could happen where circumstances, seasons of life, situations, people grow that causes that language to shift okay. in another direction. So again, just plain devil's advocate, from the standpoint of a language, at least I personally, let me uh -huh. speak for myself, I didn't think a language is something that, that changes. So mm -hmm. I grew up speaking whatever language, and all of a sudden when I'm older, I would just switch my language altogether if we're good for in that context. Mm -hmm. You can choose to speak another language. This is, this is true. <laughs> this is true. But that would not be your native language, and that would be a choice, right? But... I digress mm -hmm. because it turns out that that was an area of conflict for us whereby I hint given gifts and gifts and gifts which I thought were her uh, which was actually it was your primary love language giving of gifts and spending quality time mm -hmm. right your two love yeah, language I, hey, I like hanging out with you okay, well, <laughs> so all of a sudden I mean especially after the kids after you've been through you know life challenges up and down 
you're given the same gifts, or you're given more expensive versions of the same gifts. Let me let me qualify that. Mm -hmm. And you're getting diminishing returns for your effort, you know. So that became an area of conflict. I mean, it was a serious area of conflict until um, illumination came in by way of uh, conversation. Conversation, which is one of the seeds. But what structured that conversation as and how do we stumble upon that particular nugget, at least for me? Well, I mean, you know, I've been saying it though, I think, but it wasn't registering. Mm, I didn't believe <laughs> For whatever reason, I kept saying... Limiting belief sets. I mean, I mean. Okay, so let's take the question of jewelry, for instance, right? So I am, I only have one neck. Like, how, how many necklaces can I wear, you know? And uh, But it's not like I go out that often. And even if I did, I'm just not a person who basically, you know, I, I may wear the one necklace for like two weeks. Yeah. Just saying. But, you know, uh, it became a point of how many necklaces can I have, right? There, there are more important things that perhaps you might want to um, spend money on. And then when the children came, which is like a season of life, and again, culture, because it's just us, right? We don't have a live-in um, nanny, even though, you know, it's, uh, what, what's, what's the, <laughs> as a goal. <laughs> As a goal, even where the children grow up. Yes, but, you know, so it was a question of, I need help around here. I would appreciate the help more as opposed to, um, I appreciate the chipping in more, right? Because I don't necessarily consider it help in that sense, but um, you, that, that would be more appreciated, right? When the tasks were uh, distributed or shared in that sense um so yeah let me continue your thing so then we were then doing uh conversations around updating um our love maps to say what are the things that i do the most that you appreciate and then that was one of those and then he said so oh, yeah and then the question came up you know what, what were the love languages yeah. i'm like oh i got this in the bag yeah. it's giving of gifts and it's you know it's mm -hmm. um spending quality time only shocker wowzy Girlfriend says, actually spouse at the time says, <laughs> this, <laughs> this, this is not my love language. I mean, it's changed. I'm like, uh, well, I didn't get the memo. <laughs> you changed. did. You just were not paying attention. It, it changed. was still in your inbox. <laughs> you hadn't moved it to the outbox. So I'm like, okay, this has changed. So, so what is that? I mean, acts of service. So fine. So experiment, you know, I mean, scientists, we have to experiment, right? She goes on a trip, and before she returns, I tell the boys, this house has to be looking spick and spank for a month. So we're cleaning, washing, freezing, mopping, drying, washing dishes, everything. And girlfriend comes back, and it's, wow. It's like, the, the reception was, are you kidding me? I mean, high points return on investment. <laughs> I mean, I'll just, leave it, I'll, just, I'll just leave it at that. Let's just say escalated <laughs> to the third C, but we'll just leave it at that. But, I mean, who knew that, you know, uh, housework could be an aphrodisiac, right? But uh, I love languages, it works. Mm -hmm. So have you now continued? So now the question would be for me, like, if my language changed, do I think his language changed? No. No. <laughs> he did it. It stayed <laughs> the same, you know? So I, you can tell sometimes maybe who the, who is having... What, why, why, how, why would we say a person's language didn't change? They're satisfied, they're having more fun, they're stable, they're just like, okay, you know, this is me, I have no desire to change. What, what could be the reasons why I, people's I, languages I don't, don't change? I, I don't know. Mysteries of life, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe personality. Mm -hmm. But then there again becomes where conversations around this area is important to know yeah. that, okay, this is going on, right? As in, this hasn't changed and we, we, um, so we we what's the word we're well, updating your love maps mm -hmm. you know or updating mm -hmm. conversations and okay this you used to like this do you still like it mm -hmm. you know i mean mm -hmm. sometimes it sounds like a an uh an affectionate type of question to ask yeah. us and because yeah. it tends to be like oh, you you should know me you, you should, should know, know me yeah. by now but mm -hmm. apparently no you yeah. should ask yeah you know? yeah 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 i think you bring up an important point because you know at least for the women it's fond of saying you should know uh, but then you kind of say, well, I don't know. I cannot read your mind, right? So, 
So part of that conversation was this, right? So this is something where even when I still do that, right? If I mistakenly go in that direction of, I thought you knew this. It's like, mm, no, no. And you know, I can't get annoyed because it's part of the conversations that we've had that when you see me drifting that down that path of mind reading, of, of thinking that you should be reading my mind, you need to call me back and say, hey girl, <laughs> I cannot read your mind, I don't know. And because it's part of the script as it were, right, you kind of say, okay, well, this is exactly what I'm expecting. This can get very, not boring, but if you, if you hurt us, you probably be like, what's going on with them? Because it sounds very like uh, the person is not caring, but it's a question of, no, you're trying to set um not not take for granted. Yes, exactly. You know, I mean, yeah, not trying to set granted. principles yeah. in place, right? So, you know, maybe there are times when um he's asking me a question and I go it should be there or it should you know, like my answers come quite clinical, but it's not necessarily because I'm trying to be mean. It's we've had those conversations of saying these are the kinds of things that, you know, will be expected in this particular situation. So everybody knows where they stand in terms of uh, feedback, right? In terms of answer versus feedback. So, yeah, so that's um, really kind of what we, we're we going to focus on today. So the question for you is, what do you think, you know, are your love languages? The love languages won't translate for you, right? Is that something that you've thought about is that something that you know you've had the conversation with and you know um this we keep talking about interpersonal relationships right you should think about this too for your friends right there are some friends who you send messages to them and that's it for them right and then there's some others for whom it's the little gifts, you know, it's the little thought, when they say, oh, you're so thoughtful, right? So when people keep saying you're so thoughtful, it's basically because you're aligning to the things that bring them joy, right? And so in that sense, they're like, okay, this person kind of knows me, they've observed me, and they've seen that this is maybe what I like, right? But for a husband and wife, I think it's more important to have that conversation, right? Uh, the surprise element is great, but you cannot keep surprising a person with something that they're not interested in. How does that work? True, but then the danger, I think, from at least from let me speak from a guy's perspective, is if you're not sure, you want to ask. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'll, I'll, at least I personally, I keep on saying personally, I can't speak for anybody, but so I'll ask. 10 times out of 9 if I'm not sure. Now, I might get some negative feedback saying, well, but I already told you this before. Isn't it? Some people might see it as you're not being attentive and they might have a point. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say they might not have a point, but in the moment as in, do we want to get this accomplished right now? Or are you upset about what I did or did not mm -hmm. remember? And I found that most of it. Moving forward, right, the key thing about... Um, you know, the love language is what we can say we've learned is to ask. So even though I'm saying that for Bra Stanley, that um, his has not changed. It's not because I assumed, it's because I kept asking him. And it's like, you know, nothing has changed. And so the idea is to um, take that first step to asking, I think. You know, whether male, whether female, whether man, whether woman, right? You kind of take the first step because you want to um feel the other person's love bank right you want to be able to um do the things like you said that will give you a return on investment so even though you're feeling the other person's bank you're also getting bang for your buck right in that sense so well. yeah and it also helps to build trust mm -hmm. yeah i mean i guess that's the essence of improved communication yeah. You have a, a, a larger trust um, balance yeah. so that when somebody does something offensive or yeah. something like that, because you have that trust balance, you take an account of that account. But um, just thinking, do you, is your primary thing, in, in the accent of the question and the mm -hmm. responses to the question, when the other person's accent becomes irritable or the other person's responses are... Um, and not quite what you'd expect for someone trying to fish out and get information that will help. 
the question to consider is is it about who's right and who's wrong or are we both paddling in the direction of you know an improved optimal uh, relationship or interaction as it were mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. yeah i think that's something do you want to be right or do you want to move forward <laughs> so you get to make you know um that decision in that sense yeah so that's it for this episode and we kind of um, something that we want to be doing as we move forward is to kind of say a word of prayer for everyone who is kind of uh, listening in, right? So, yeah, Brother Stanley. It's Brother Stanley. We have to have a conversation with Brother Stanley. We're going to have to have a conversation. Is this Sister Tito? Sister Tito. Please pray. I have an idea. Um, so, for this first episode, Sister Tito. <laughs> Okay. Mm. Okay. Since they've passed the spiritual mantle to me for this episode, but hello, you're yeah, the priest, right? That's what they say. However, um, Father, we pray that everyone at the under the sound of our voices that are seeking for ways to enhance um, the emotional health of their marriage, right? That you give them um, the wisdom to know what to do to be able to. Um, speak their spouse's language and to channel you the God of love in Jesus name Amen, Amen. <laughs>